peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. These are the comforting words of Jesus in John 14, verse 27. And that's what Jesus is saying to you today. So, do not fear. The peace of God has the power to calm your fears and soothe your troubled heart. Let go and let God. Each of us, at some point in our journey through life, has come face to face with fear, doubt, and worry. Now consider fear. Fear can grab us by the hand and stop us in our tracks, making the world seem like a big, scary place. Fear is a response to perceived danger or threat. Fear often arises when we feel that we are not in control, when we can't predict what will happen next, or when we feel that something we value is at risk. When we're afraid, it's often because we're focusing on our lack of control, our uncertainties, and our weaknesses. Then there is also the fear of not doing well, the fear of not fitting in. These feelings can be like heavy bags that we carry around every day. You see, it's easy to hold on to these bags of fear. But the good news is, we don't have to. Our God, the creator of the universe, the painter of the skies and the sculptor of the mountains, tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Our God is holding out his hand, asking us to hand over these heavy bags. The Bible is full of stories about ordinary people, just like us, who had to confront their fears. Think of Gideon, a man who thought himself the least important in his family, asked by God to save Israel from their enemies. He was scared and unsure, but God told him in Judges 6 verse 12, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. With God by his side, Gideon was able to do amazing things. Today, I invite you to take your heavy bags of fear and place them into the hands of God, trusting that he will guide you through. Before we can start to overcome fear, we must first acknowledge its existence. Fear wears many faces. For some, it is the fear of failure. This kind of fear can stop us from trying new things or following our dreams, all because we're scared that we might not succeed. For others, it's the fear of rejection, a fear that can keep us from reaching out and connecting with others. Still, for some, it is the fear of the unknown, the fear of what tomorrow might bring. In the book of Job, chapter 3, verse 25, Job shares... What I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. This powerful verse reminds us that even in biblical times, people were wrestling with the same kinds of fears that we have to deal with today. Now, for a moment, let's think about what fear does to us. Fear can keep us from becoming the people that God wants us to be. It can make us feel like we're trapped in a small box, limiting our thoughts our actions, and our dreams. It hinders our growth, makes us feel alone, and holds us back from fulfilling our God-given potential. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 25, it says, Fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. So fear can trap us, keeping us from the safety and peace that can be found in trusting God. Fear is real. It's not something we can just wish away. But the Bible assures us that we are not alone in our fears. It guides us to the one who can calm our fears and give us the courage to face them. To overcome fear, we need to understand where it comes from. Often fear is born out of uncertainty. It's like standing at the edge of a cliff on a dark night. 
We can't see what's down below and we're afraid to take the next step. The unknown can be scary because we don't know what to expect, and that's when fear seizes the opportunity to creep in. But fear can be used by the devil to discourage and deceive us. The enemy, Satan, often uses fear to create anxiety, doubt, and confusion in our lives. When we operate out of fear, it can cause us to make poor decisions, hinder our faith, and even distance us from God. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 34, Jesus teaches us, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Jesus is reminding us not to stress over things we can't control, like the future, when we dwell on uncertainty and give room to worry. We inadvertently show a lack of trust in God's plan for us. And this lack of trust can lead to fear. We start to wonder if we will be okay or if we can handle what comes next. Instead of relying on God, we start to rely on ourselves and we begin to fear because we know our own limitations. This fear can sometimes indicate a lack of faith in God's power, protection, and provision. When we fear, we forget the Almighty God we serve, the God who parted the Red Sea, the God who made the sun stand still. We forget that the same God has promised to be with us and help us. In Psalm 46 verse 1 we read, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Yet when fear takes over, we forget these promises. We forget that God is bigger than any problem we might face and that he has promised to be with us in every situation. Fear then becomes a clear sign that we need to grow in our faith, that we need to trust more in God's promises and lean more on his everlasting arms. As we seek to overcome fear, it's important to understand God's perspective on fear. How does God see fear? The Bible, our guidebook for life, is filled with verses that tell us about God's viewpoint. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. This verse teaches us that fear is not from God. Instead, God gives us power, love, and a sound mind. This means that we have the ability to overcome fear because God has equipped us with everything we need. Let's also look at Psalm 56, verse 3. It says, When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. This verse is an honest confession and a reminder. It's okay to feel fear, but what do we do with that fear? We put our trust in God. We give our fear to God because we believe that he is more powerful than anything we fear. But God doesn't just tell us not to fear. He also gives us promises that provide us with strength, help, and peace. These promises are God's words of assurance to us when we are dealing with fear. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10, God tells us, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This verse shows us that God doesn't just tell us not to fear. He also promises to be with us and strengthen us. And again, in Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, we hear God saying, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This verse is God's promise to us that he is always with us and that he will guide us through every situation. You see, from God's perspective, fear is not something that should control us. Instead, God wants us to trust him with our fears. He wants us to remember his promises of help, strength, and his presence. He wants us to live a life free from the bondage of fear and filled with the freedom of faith. Let's now turn our attention to the critical act of letting go. 
a phrase that may sound simple but carries a profound spiritual truth. Now, let go and let God does not mean giving up. It's far from it. It means to surrender. And not just any surrender, but surrendering our fears to God. When we say, let go and let God, we mean releasing the tight grip that we have on our fears and worries, opening our hands and saying, God, I'm placing these in your hands. It's like handing over the heavy luggage we've been carrying around, giving it to God and saying, Lord, you take care of this, but why should we let go? What happens when we surrender our fears to God? There is power in surrender. When we let go and give our fears to God, we trade our heavy burdens for His peace. We exchange our anxiety for His assurance. The book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Did you hear that promise? When we let go of our fears and present our worries to God, He promises to give us His peace, a peace that goes beyond what we can understand. It's a peace that will guard our hearts and minds. So letting go is not a sign of weakness. It's an act of faith. It's saying, God, I trust you more than I trust my fears. I believe you can handle this more than I can. And in return, we receive God's peace, a peace that will help us overcome our fears. After letting go, the next step in overcoming fear is trusting in God. But what does it mean to trust? Trust is having a firm belief in the reliability, truth, or ability of someone. And in our faith journey, that someone is our almighty God. Trusting in God means believing that He is who He says He is, that He can do what He says He can do, and that He will do what He has promised to do. It's about relying on God's character, His goodness, His wisdom, His love and His track record, His faithfulness throughout His story. So what happens when we trust in God? What benefits does trust bring? Well, trusting in God replaces our fear with peace. It swaps our worry with joy. It exchanges our uncertainty with the assurance of God's sovereignty and goodness. Trusting in God means we believe that God is in control, that He is working for our good, even when we can't see it. In Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6, the Bible tells us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. This verse not only encourages us to trust God, but also promises that when we do, God will guide our lives. But how can we trust God more? How can we build that trust? Trusting God isn't something that happens overnight. It's a journey. Here are some practical steps that we can take on that journey. Our first step to building trust is through prayer. Communicate with God. Share your fears, your worries, your doubts, and your joys. Remember, prayer isn't just about asking. It's about listening, too. It's about creating a space where you can hear God's voice. In the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. This verse teaches us to bring everything to God in prayer, our joys, our sorrows, our fears, and our dreams, everything. Secondly, we need to do some scripture meditation. Spend time reading and meditating on God's Word. The Bible is filled with stories of God's faithfulness and promises. The more we immerse ourselves in His Word, the more our trust in Him grows. In the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8, it says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. This verse encourages us to continually meditate on God's Word. 
and also reassures us that when we read God's word and put it into practice, God will make us prosper and succeed in life. Thirdly, we need to understand and embrace the truth that perfect love casts out fear. Let's consider what it means when we say perfect love. What is perfect love? Perfect love is a kind of love that's complete, without flaw or lacking nothing. It's a love that is so full, it leaves no room for anything else. And where does this kind of love come from? It can only come from God, the source of all love. God's love for us is absolute, unchanging, and eternal. But here's where the power of perfect love comes in. When we truly comprehend and internalize God's perfect love for us, it pushes out fear. Why? Because God's perfect love assures us that He is in control, even when we're not. God's perfect love tells us that He holds our future, even when we can't predict what will happen next. God's perfect love guarantees that He values us beyond measure, even when we feel at risk. When we are rooted and grounded in God's love, fear loses its power over us. We realize that even if our fears were to come true, we would still be safe in the arms of God's love. So, because God's love for us is perfect, we can trust Him fully, knowing that He wants the best for us and is able to make it happen. And the last step for building trust in God is fellowship. This is about spending time with other believers, sharing your faith journey with them, and learning from their experiences. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 25, it says, Not giving up, meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more, as you see, the day approaching. This verse shows us the importance of fellowship in our faith journey. So, trusting God is a journey. It's a journey filled with learning and growth, and it's a journey that leads us to peace, joy, and assurance. Therefore, as we continue on this journey, let's embrace faith over fear. Let's trust God with all our hearts. Do you recall Jehoshaphat, a king of Judah, his story can be found in 2 Chronicles 20. Jehoshaphat faced a vast army, one that he couldn't possibly defeat on his own. Yet instead of letting fear control him, Jehoshaphat turned to God. He prayed, We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. This is the word of the Lord according to 2 Chronicles 20 verse 12. Jehoshaphat recognized that his strength was insufficient, but he trusted that God's strength was more than enough. As the story unfolds, we see God providing a miraculous victory for Jehoshaphat. When the king and his people trusted in God and leaned on him, their fear was replaced with faith, and their defeat turned into victory. This story reminds us that fear can indeed be overcome. That when we choose to trust God, he can turn our fears into faith, our trials, into testimonies and our worries, into worship. So, let us be encouraged by this story and choose to trust God in the face of fear. As we go about our day, or as we go about our journey of life, let us carry with us the lessons learned today. I want to extend a challenge to each one of us. The challenge is to make a conscious choice every day, a choice to choose faith over fear, to decide to let go of our worries and anxieties, and to trust in God's plan and provision. In moments of fear and anxiety, remember this Bible verse found in Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Let us decide to trust in God, not just when the sun is shining, but also when the storm is raging. Let's decide to believe in His promises not just when they are easy to see, but also when they seem far off. For God is faithful, His promises are true, and His love for us is unfailing. So let's stand together. Let go of our fears, trust in our God, and embrace the journey of faith. Now to all those within the sound of my voice, 
let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God, dear Heavenly Father. I give you all the glory, honor, and praise. I praise you for your unfailing kindness and for your patience that is beyond measure. I come before you today, recognizing that you are a God of love, a God of power, and a God of perfect peace. Lord, help me not to lose sight of your goodness and faithfulness. Father, I surrender my fears to you. I let go of the anxieties that cloud my thoughts and the worries that rob me of my peace. In the name of Jesus, I declare that fear has no hold on me, for your perfect love cast out all fear. Lord, I pray for my loved ones, those near and far. I ask you, Lord, to comfort their hearts, to give them the strength to let go of their fears, to trust in your unconditional love and care. In the name of Jesus, I declare peace over their lives. The peace that surpasses all understanding, the peace that anchors our souls in the stormy seas of life. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of fear that seeks to paralyze me, that seeks to keep me from stepping into the fullness of your plans for my life. I declare that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, not by my strength, but through your mighty power working in and through me. Lord, I ask for an increase in faith, a faith that trusts you, a faith that looks beyond the present circumstances to your promises. Lord, help me to trust you more each day, knowing that you work all things together for my good. Father, I pray that I may experience the freedom that comes from trusting in you that I may experience the peace that comes from letting go of my worries. I place them in your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that I have victory over fear, anxiety, doubt, and worry. Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering my prayers. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word amen in the comment section below. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all your support. You're blessed to be a blessing. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory and so that other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world can join us and start praying for you right now. To God be all the glory. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you in the name of Jesus. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.